We live in a world that is full of information more than ever. There's so many data, so many uh, research that we can see everywhere. And we might think that because I am acquiring a lot of information, that's gonna bring me wisdom. But there's a big difference between knowledge and wisdom. And if there is something that the Word of the Lord is recommending you and me to grow in, to acquire, is the wisdom of the Lord, because it's a treasure. And it doesn't come that easily, because it requires time, it requires investment, and it comes actually from the Lord. So today we're going to talk about this amazing treasure that the wisdom of the Lord is, and the importance of us like paying the price to acquire this amazing wisdom that comes from the Lord, our God. So welcome to Living Life. It's good to have you here today. God bless you. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 19. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance, for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie in wait for innocent blood, let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast lots with us, we will all share the loot. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. For their feet rush into evil, they are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. What is starting the, the, the precious book of Proverbs. You know, there is so many, uh, uh, you know, Proverbs uh, that we're going to learn so much throughout the whole book. And I encourage you to, you know, be uh, steadfast, like keep just learning. And in the first verse... Uh, it, Solomon starts speaking about how um, he, uh, the importance of gaining wisdom and instruction for understanding words of, of insight. So, uh, like I was saying in the beginning, uh, we might think that as we are surrounded with so many podcasts and, you know, radio shows and TV shows and YouTube and Instagram and so many social networks that we are you know, addicted actually to this, uh, you know, overflow of information. But the Lord is is teaching us in this first chapter and is this first verse that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, is the beginning of wisdom. So when we know the Lord, we honor, we respect the Lord. That's the foundation of wisdom. It's not so much. Yes, we can, you know, have a career, get a title, take so many courses, which is great. But the most important thing is to get to know the Lord and to honor. You know, when we say the fear of the Lord, we have to understand that it's not about, you know, being afraid in that sense. But take the Lord seriously. Like when you consider who the Lord is, His love, His warnings, His promises— that's going to bring so much wisdom. In my personal life, I, I, I grew up in a, in a family where there was no fear of the Lord. And honestly, I was so crazy and out of control. But by God's grace, when I had my encounter with Jesus, I was able to 
know the Lord, and it led me in these 47 years that I've been walking with the Lord by His grace to take good decisions, not, not all the time, but many times, but they are based on the fear of the Lord, like, Lord, I don't want to go in this direction. I don't want to do this thing. I don't want to overstep some boundaries because, you know, I rather consider that you are God. And by God's grace, I've seen how this fear of the Lord has granted me to act wisely, you know, in dealing with people, in business, in different situations of my life. The fear of the Lord has been the beginning of wisdom. So I want to encourage you to spend time in the Word as you are doing it, to, to get to know the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, the, cultivating this amazing fear of the Lord. Because the opposite that, that, that we see is that, well, uh, is that the, the, the sinful people, the wicked people, are going to start to deceive. They offer, you know, other options. Okay, instead of being wise, you do your own thing. You pursue whatever you want. There is a seduction and deception in this world that wants to, you know, pull us away of the Lord, not to be a, a, a wise, but to be cunning, to be, you know, smart in a way where we get the things uh, uh, that we want, the way that we want it. And there is a warning here, like in verse 10, like, my son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. Like, we have to be awakened. So many times in the Bible, the Lord tells us, tells us like, to be sober-minded, to watch and pray in order to not be deceived by the, by the foolish people, by the sinful people. And one of the things that we see in this uh, chapter and in this verse 8 is, uh, sorry, ver uh, yeah, verse 8 says, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. This is so important because the Lord is going to bring to our lives wisdom through our biological parents, but also spiritual, you know, fathers and mothers in the Lord that are going to pour out in our lives advices and warnings and wisdom that we need a lot. So it's very important to keep our, our connection with our spiritual fathers and mothers in order to receive the impartation of wisdom that we need because the older generation, they do have a lot of wisdom that they have acquired throughout the years, especially in the Lord, that are going to help us so much. So I, I, I invite you to always keep an open heart to the advice of the older people, to their wisdom. You may think, well, you know, they are old-fashioned. You know, their ideas are not that relevant. But the Lord says here, that through us listening to our spiritual fathers and mothers, and even obviously our natural fathers and mothers, we're going to receive wisdom. And this is so important for us. I want to encourage you, encourage all of us to take this invitation of the Lord so seriously in our lives because it's going to be worth it, investing time in acquiring with the wisdom of the Lord that is greater than any treasure that we can acquire in our lives. So it's so important. Praise the Lord for the clarity of the word of the Lord, especially in the book of Proverbs, where he's inviting us as one of the main things in our lives to acquire wisdom, not just, like I was saying, information or knowledge in general, but knowing and fearing the Lord. So let me pray for you today for this important aspect of our lives. Father, we thank you for the advice of your word that we are invited to acquire wisdom, Father. So as James says that if we lack wisdom, we will ask you, Lord, we will meditate on your word and you are going to grant us the wisdom that we need in life, in our relationships, in our business, in different decisions. Father, I pray and I believe that through your grace, we can receive wisdom to do well in life, to walk in your will, Father, and take good decisions for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. 
in living life.